Snow Brothers is one of the most rare and expensive cartridges for the NES, but it's also one of the best two-player cooperative games for the system. Snow Brothers is a single-screen action puzzle game similar to games like Tumble Pop, Rodland, or Bubble Bobble. Your goal is to clear all of the enemies on each screen by capturing them within snowballs and then rolling those snowballs over other enemies. Like most other games in the genre, Snow Brothers started out as an arcade game where it was called Snow Bros. The arcade version was released in 1990 and designed by Japanese developer Toa Plan, a studio that is much more well known for their shooter games like Truxton, Tiger Heli, and the poorly translated Zero Wing. In the 1980s, most arcade gamers were men, but by the end of the decade, developers had recognized that if they could make some games that were more appealing to women, they could potentially tap into a large, underserved market. I'm not saying that there weren't any women interested in playing Contra, but they were few and far between. Taito's Bubble Bobble had been a success by toning down the violence, using cute characters, and encouraging two-player cooperative gameplay so that couples could play together. Toa Plan followed this blueprint, but replaced the bubble-shooting dinosaurs with snowball-throwing snowmen. While Snow Bros seems shamelessly similar to Bubble Bobble, rolling snowballs feels very different from popping bubbles and gives the gameplay a unique flavor. Although Snow Bros has fewer levels than Bubble Bobble, it has five times as many boss battles, which makes for an exciting end to each set of ten floors. The music was composed by Osamu Ota, who also composed the music for Rally Bike. The music for Snow Bros was popular enough that in Japan, it was released as an album alongside music from the game OutZone. The arcade version was a moderate hit, so Capcom acquired the rights to produce a home version for the NES. The NES port was developed by a company called Softhouse and is fairly faithful to the arcade original. Some changes had to be made due to the limitations of the system, so the number of enemies on screen never exceeds five, and the fourth boss was changed so you only fight one green monster instead of two. Still, the gameplay feels just like the original, all 50 levels are included, and it still has that two-player cooperative mode. Capcom released the NES version in November of 1991, and while the game was well received, the Super Nintendo had just been released in August of 91, which greatly limited the excitement for new NES games. In 1994, Toa Plan released a sequel in the arcade titled Snow Bros 2 with new elves, but sadly it wasn't popular enough to save the company from going bankrupt shortly afterwards. The original Snow Brothers was ported to many other platforms, including the Game Boy and Sega Genesis. If you'd like to play an authentic Snow Brothers cartridge on a real NES, it will not come cheap. Original cartridges are rare, so expect to pay quite a bit on the secondary market. This is one of those games you'll just have to play however you can. In modern times, a company called Tatsujin, which owns many of Toa Plan's old properties, revived the game for modern platforms. This new version, called Snow Bros Special, is very similar to the arcade original, but features updated graphics and has tons of new modes. Modern players that attempt the classic NES version will still have to deal with all of the challenges NES games are notorious for. You get nine continues, which seems like a lot, but if you want to see the game's true ending, you'll need to get all the way to the end without using any of them. 
But what if I told you the best way to complete all 50 floors? What if I showed you secret tricks, like a code for a special mode, or two hidden warp zones? And what if I told you the best way to defeat every boss? Even the rock bubble heads on floor number 50? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and check out YouCanBeatVideoGames.com for episode lists, news, and official You Can Beat Video Games merchandise. And please join our Patreon for access to an exclusive Discord community and a chance to vote on future episodes. Let's get started. All right, Snow Brothers. As we start up a new game, if you don't decide to skip it, you'll see a cutscene that explains the story. This scene was not part of the arcade game, so it was added after the fact for the home release. That's probably why it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. In the story according to the NES game, an evil fire wizard named King Scorch was plotting to take over the world because that's just what fire wizards do. But no matter how hard he tried, his armies could never defeat the princes from the Kingdom of Whiteland, Prince Nick and Prince Tom, who I've gotta say, for a pair of princes from a fantastical kingdom, those guys have some seriously generic sounding names. Then one day, King Scorch thought he found a solution. He would use a magic curse to turn Nick and Tom into snowmen. Now I'm going to assume that he was thinking that once Nick and Tom were turned into snowmen, he could use his fire magic to vaporize them on the spot, or maybe he just watched the Frosty the Snowman TV special and figured he could trap them in a greenhouse until they melted into a puddle. But of course, that's not what happened at all. I'm not sure if King Scorch used some kind of monkey paw magic to make this curse, or maybe the moral of the story is that Fire Wizard shouldn't mess around with ice magic, but in any case, he actually gave Nick and Tom a bunch of ice abilities, making them more powerful than ever. With his snowman spell successfully cast, King Scorch kinda thought that Nick and Tom were taken care of, so he went ahead and kidnapped two princesses from the Kingdom of Snowland because reasons. Now I'm not sure if the Kingdom of Snowland is part of the Kingdom of Whiteland or maybe they're two separate countries, but in any case, when Nick and Tom heard what happened to the princesses, they vowed to rescue them from King Scorch. Now you may be thinking, this story is pretty basic boilerplate stuff, we're gonna play through a bunch of levels and at the end we'll have to fight that King Scorch guy. But if you were thinking that, you would be totally wrong because King Scorch doesn't actually appear in the game at all. Why they wouldn't try to write a story that incorporates the actual final boss of the game is beyond me, but this is what we got. And with that, it's time for floor number one. We only have four basic enemies to remove here, and if you hit an enemy with some snow, it will become incapacitated, but you won't actually be able to clear it until you hit it multiple times and completely encase it into a snowball, and then roll that snowball by pressing up against it and pushing the fire button. If you can clear all of the enemies on the screen by just rolling one snowball, some dollar bills will rain down from the sky that are worth bonus points. Whenever you push a snowball, it will roll downwards, so ideally you'll be doing your attacking from above. Whenever you start up a new floor, you'll have a few seconds of invincibility, so you can use that time to quickly jump to the top. If an enemy drops a round snowman head item, quickly grab it to trigger a bonus stage. The bonus stage doesn't last long, 
but for each one of the slime enemies that you completely cover in snow and push, you'll be able to get a letter, and right now we have an O and a W. If we can spell out the word snow, we'll get an extra life, but we won't be able to get more letters unless we find another bonus stage, or we could get some out of the slot machine that we'll find after we fight the next boss. If you take too much time trying to clear out the floors, a pumpkin head ghost will appear and try to kill you. The pumpkin head ghost can be slowed down by hitting it with some snow, but it's definitely relentless and it won't stop chasing you until you either clear the floor or lose a life. An enemy that gets hit by a rolling snowball will drop an item, and some items like the cake slices, the mushroom, or the lollipop are just worth points, but the potions will give you special powers, so make sure to grab those anytime you see them. The green frog-like enemies that you see here are called botchans, and those guys can spit fireballs, so they're a lot more dangerous than the basic red titchy enemies, and should be considered a priority whenever you see them. Here on floor 5, I like to freeze an enemy in the upper left corner and keep hitting it with snow until the other ones move into position so that you can push it to the right and take them all out. If you keep using your snow attack on an enemy that's already frozen, you'll prevent it from thawing out, so that's a good way to hold an enemy in place for as long as you need to. Here on floor 6, quickly jump up to the top and freeze both bot chans. Push one snowball into the other, and they'll go flying in opposite directions, which will hopefully clear out the entire room. One of the enemies dropped a blue potion, which is one of the better potions you can find. That will power up your snow attack, so you won't have to hit the enemies as many times to completely cover them in snow. Here on floor 7, work your way to the upper right corner, freeze an enemy in place, and try to get two of them next to each other. Then push one snowball into the other for the chain reaction effect, and you should be able to clear out everything. Even if you don't get all of the enemies with your double snowball attack, it should still be pretty easy to finish off whoever remains. Floor 8 is a dangerous one, so you want to try to get to the top as quickly as possible while you're still invincible, but try to freeze the enemies on the right while you're climbing up. Then you can push that top enemy to the left, and then safely finish off the ones on the right. We got the bonus stage again, and we still have two letters in snow from the last time. Remember, you'll get points for rolling over enemies, but only ones you actually capture in a snowball will generate letters. We got the two letters that we needed to spell out snow, so we were able to earn an extra life. No enemies spawn on the right side of floor 9, so you can safely climb up on that side. Once you're at the top, wait for the Budoro enemy below your feet to hop up, and you can easily freeze him into a snowball and push him to the left for a quick clear. We didn't kill all the enemies with that snowball, but one of them dropped a green potion, which will give us temporary invincibility to finish off the rest. And now it's time for the first boss, Mogira. Mogira may be the first boss, but he's actually one of the more difficult bosses to fight. Your snow attack does damage the boss. It's possible to beat this guy without rolling a single enemy at him, but it'll take a long time. Instead, you want to stay at the front of the top platform. From here, you'll be able to hit the boss with your snow attack to deal a little bit of chip damage, and most of the enemies that he throws at you will either go below your feet or over your head. If he throws one over your head, make sure to turn around and freeze it into a snowball so you can push it at the boss. If you freeze an enemy and it drops down to the platform directly below you, you can drop down there and push it at the boss when he's on the lower tier. For the most part though, you don't want to leave the safety of the top platform, so just hang out up there, try to hit any enemies that actually land on your platform, and focus on hitting the boss with your snow attack whenever you have an opportunity. After just a few hits from the snowballs, or a lot of hits from your snow attack, Mogira will be frozen solid, and we'll be on to the next floor. Before we move on though, we do get to play the bonus slot machine. The slot machine contains letters or blue characters which will give you an extra life. Each one of the three reels is scored individually. 
If you get an X, you don't get anything. If you get a letter, it will be added to the top of the screen and will go towards spelling snow. If you get a blue snowman, you'll get an extra life. So if you get three snowmen, you can get the maximum of three lives from the slot machine. We have a new set of floors here, and floor 11's on the easier side. Just get to the top and push a snowball to the left, and you should be able to quickly clear out the enemies here. Floor 12, on the other hand, introduces the most dangerous enemy in the game, the Komataros. Komataros don't look like much, they're just blue bearded guys. But if you give them enough time, they'll spin up and turn into a tornado. That tornado will move towards your position, and sometimes there's nothing you can do to avoid it. So don't give the Komataros a chance. Whenever you see them, quickly clear them out. Now before we move on from floor 12, this is where the first warp zone is. It's right down here in this spot, just keep throwing your snow until a money bag appears, and when you collect the money bag, you'll be taken to this special slot machine. Instead of collecting extra lives or snow letters from this slot machine, you'll be able to skip floors. On the first reel you can skip up to one floor, the second reel you can skip up to two, and on the third reel it's possible to skip three floors for a total of six floors skipped. If you spin any X's, you won't get anything for that, but skipping any number of floors is good. I usually try to stop the reels right after I see a double X go by, because the thing that I most want to do is avoid getting an X, so that we can at least get a 1 or a 2, if not a 3. Even if you get all X's, you'll move on to floor 13, and if you get the maximum of 6 floors, you'll be sent all the way to floor 19. But we're not going to use the warp zone here, I want to show you all of the floors, so let's take a look at floor 13, where we have to deal with Komataros again. I like to clear out the Komataro at the bottom as soon as possible so that it doesn't have a chance to turn into a tornado, and then take out the one at the top. On floor 14 we're going to use a similar strategy, take out the two Komataros on the left side as quickly as you can, and then it should be easy to finish off the basic Titchis on the right. There's kind of a sneaky way to take out all of the enemies on floor 15. Climb up the left side and freeze the bot-chan at the top, but don't push the snowball. Now jump over to the right, freeze an enemy, and push it to the right. This will hit all of the enemies, and it will roll back up into the corner, taking out the bot-chan that you froze earlier. Not bad. Floor 16 is another easy one. Climb up on the right side and freeze the enemy at the top. There's only one enemy up there, so it should be easy to get him. Now just hold him in place until the enemies on the left side drop down, and then push him off to the left to clear them all out. Make sure you're at the bottom of the screen so you can grab those dollar bills that fall down. They do not remain on the screen for a very long time. Floor 17 has a single Komataro enemy, and it's on the left side so you know what we want to do about him. Hop up there and freeze him in place, and then if you wait for a second enemy to come over, you can freeze him in place as well, and then push one snowball into the other for a devastating double snowball attack. That should likely clear out all of the enemies on the screen, and move us on to floor 18. Floor 18 has two Komataros, and they're up at the top, so you want to run up the slope on the left side, and then hit the Komataros from the right. Push one snowball into the other, and those Budoro enemies should be easily removed. If you ride the snowballs to the bottom of the screen, you'll be in prime position to catch the dollar bills that rain down, but try not to miss the other items. Floor 19 is the last one before the next boss, and you just want to climb up the right side, take out the bot-chan up there, and then wait by the snowball until the bot-chan on the left drops down, and then you should be able to take him out by pushing the snowball to the left. We have to clear out one more titchy enemy here, which we can do, and we have a lot of potion power moving into the boss stage, so that's going to make it a bit easier. This boss is named Gamma Kichi, and he can appear at the top or the bottom of the screen. If he appears at the top, get right next to him on the left side and start hitting him with snow. Don't get so close that you touch his mouth though. Watch for him to shoot a bomb over your head on the left side. 
You will need to turn around to encase that enemy in snow, but don't start rolling the snowballs at the boss until you see where he reappears. If he reappears at the bottom, it's very easy to roll some snowballs on him, and you can just stay right here in this position where you can hit him with your snowballs and push enemies at him. Now he's back to the top of the screen again. So we're going to get in the same position as before, but watch out for all the enemies that he launches at you, especially the ones that go over your head on the left side. You'll also need to encase the ones that come from the right, but you should get those automatically just from hitting the boss. After a few snowballs are rolled over this guy, he'll explode in a flurry of stars, and we'll be on to the next set of floors. Of course, before we do that, we have another chance at the bonus slot machine, and if you're trying to beat the game without using any continues, this is a good opportunity to pick up some extra lives. The only way you can get extra lives in this game is through this slot machine or by spelling out the word snow in this bonus stage or the other one that you get for finding a snowman head item. You don't get any extra lives for points. As we ascend this set of floors, we'll use some advanced techniques, but here on floor 21, you don't have to do anything fancy. Just hop up to the top, freeze the two dangerous bot-chan enemies, push one snowball into the other, and let the double snowball action do the rest of the work. You may want to hurry down to the bottom so you can collect the dollar bills that rain down. We'll prioritize the bot-chan enemies again here on floor 22. Hop up the left side and take out the lower green bot-chan, and then eliminate the other one in the upper right corner. This time we got a red potion which will make us run faster, but we already had a red potion active, and getting more than one of the same potion doesn't actually do anything, which is something you should remember for the two-player mode. Ideally, you'll find a red, yellow, and blue potion all at the same time for maximum power. And you can see there's a blue potion at the top of the screen that will make it take fewer hits to cover an enemy in snow. Sadly, if you lose a life, you'll lose any active potions and will need to collect them again. Floor 24 introduces the Dos Koi Sumo Wrestler that you don't have to kill to finish the floor. He appears on a seemingly unreachable platform, so you'll need to freeze an enemy into a snowball and use it as a platform to jump up to where the Dos Koi is. If you can kill him, you'll get some bonus dollars. And if you don't kill him, he'll rain snowballs down until you finish the other enemies. There's no Dos Koi Sumo Wrestler on Floor 25, but there are three Komataros, so you'll certainly want to prioritize them. Don't give them a chance to turn into a tornado, or you may not be able to escape them. It's a bit more risky to get the bonus for killing the Dos Koi Sumo Wrestler on this floor because you'll need to freeze two enemies to get up there. If you do decide to go for it, make sure to quickly push an enemy down to the lower right corner to take out the Komataro before he turns into a tornado. Floor 27 is very easy. Just freeze the Bot-Chan in the lower left corner in place and wait for the red Titchies to drop down to the bottom. Then just push the snowball and clear them all. Grab your prizes and make your way to Floor 28. Floor 28 has two Komataros and it will take three frozen enemies used as platforms to reach the Dos Koi Sumo Wrestler here, which I just don't think is worth it. Just take out the enemies down at the bottom, watch out for the snowballs the Dos Koi throws, and once all the enemies are cleared, that sumo will simply fade away. The final floor before the next boss features three Komataros, so you'll want to hop up the left side, freeze the lower one in place, but focus on taking out the two at the top. Then you can drop down and jump back up through to take out the one you started with earlier. We got a green potion here, so we'll use that to remove the final enemy, but even without a green potion, you should easily be able to finish the final Budoro. The boss here is a pair of bird monsters named Tochan and Kachan, and you'll need to defeat both of them to clear this floor. 
You can bleed a ton of lives here if you don't know what to do, but the secret is to stay in the lower left or lower right corner. Sometimes the birds will swoop down to the bottom, but they never go all the way into the corners. If you keep using your snow attack and facing the middle, any small birds that get in your way will be turned into snowballs. Whenever you have a good opening, you can push the snowballs at the bosses. Don't jump up to the higher platforms, stay down on the ground floor, and only push the snowballs when you have a good opening. You really need to be conservative against these guys if you want to save your lives. Eventually one of the bosses will turn blue and shortly afterwards will be defeated. When there's only one boss remaining, things will get easier, but don't get sloppy. Still stay down in the lower left or right corner, look for a good opening to push the snowballs towards the boss, and don't try to jump over the boss. If the boss lands near you, just wait until it flies away and lands in a better spot. Now that the second boss is blue, it should only take one more hit to finish him off. And that'll do it. We're now on to floor 31. I like how they remind us that King Scorch is the villain here, even though we will never fight him. Let's spin that bonus wheel. I like to try to stop the reels after I see some X's because we're trying to avoid those X's. And it looks like we're going to pick up a W and one extra life. The second W is redundant, so we won't get any credit for it. The next set of floors is probably the most difficult in the game, but not floor 31. That one's easy, but it does introduce a new enemy type, the White Yetis, known as Serratas. If you let them linger on the screen for too long, the Serratas will attack you with firebombs that have a devastating wide blast radius, so consider them a priority anytime they appear. You can get stuck on the lower left or lower right side of floor 32, so climb up the center and avoid the sides. If you do get stuck, you can turn an enemy into a snowball and jump on top of it to climb out, but if there are no enemies coming your way, you may need to wait for the pumpkin head ghost to kill you so that you can escape. And you can see you can't jump out over here or in the area on the left side. Also on floor 32, you can find the game's second warp zone. If you jump and throw snow at the area directly below the last two numbers in player one's score, eventually a money bag will appear, and if you touch that money bag, you'll be taken to this bonus slot machine. Carefully stop each reel, try to avoid the X's, and on the first reel you can skip up to one floor, on the second reel you can skip up to two, and on the third reel, you can skip three floors for a total of six floors skipped if you did it perfectly. You'll also get a whole ton of points if you skip six floors. And even if you don't get the maximum, it's nice to just skip a few floors. So do your best and try to skip six. And if you do, you'll be taken all the way to floor 39. Not bad. Of course we're going to look at all of the floors, so let's go back to 33, and here we want to quickly clear the Serata in the lower right, and then freeze the Titchi in the upper right corner and hold it in place until the enemies start following you, and then you can just launch yourself at them to remove all the remaining attackers. That will take us up to floor 34. Your instinct may tell you to rush the enemies in the middle here, but there's a better way. Freeze this enemy on the left side and hold it in place until the Komataros start coming towards you with their tornadoes, then ride the snowball to the bottom. This will allow you to avoid those tornado attacks, and whenever they stop spinning, you'll be able to easily clear them out. Floor 35 has more of those traps where you can get stuck, so stay out of the middle or the upper left or upper right you can use enemies as platforms to get out. There's a blue hamburger hidden in the middle at the very top of the screen, 
and blue hamburgers are the most delicious of hamburgers. It's only worth points, but it's fun to find. Try to stay out of the traps and clear the enemies. If you do get stuck in one of them, you may need to wait for the pumpkin head ghost to kill you. Floor 36 has a trap in the lower left corner, but if you head straight up the middle, freeze the Komataro up there and push it to the right, you should be able to avoid that area entirely. So just stay out of that corner and make your way up to floor 37. Stay out of the center on floor 37 and attack the enemies from this upper left position. Eventually, they'll all jump out of there, and it'll be easy to clear them all out. Grab your prizes, and head on to floor 38. You'll see that there are four Komataros on this floor, but luckily there aren't any traps where you can get stuck. Attack the upper left Komataro through the wall, and wait until another one comes towards you in a tornado to push it. That will give you some invincibility to protect you from the tornado and should help you defeat the other Komataro as well. We do need to work a bit faster so that we can avoid the pumpkin head ghost here. We'll just quickly take out the last enemy and we'll be on to the final floor before the boss. There's a hidden blue hamburger on the right side of floor 39 but there's also two dangerous Komataros and a big trap in the middle where you can get stuck. So try freezing an enemy if you jump into the middle and using it as a platform to jump out. And if you see a Komataro coming at you with its tornado attack, try riding a snowball to get some invincibility. Now that there's only Budoros left, hopefully one will head over to us so that we can jump out of that trap. But if you do get stuck in the middle, you may need to wait for the pumpkin head ghost to come and kill you. Once all of the enemies have been cleared, it'll be time to face the next boss, Big Nose. Big Nose may be the easiest boss in the game. You may be wondering why they put an easier boss on floor 40, and it's because in the arcade version, you would have to fight two of these guys at once, which is way more difficult. The developers must not have been able to get two of them working on the NES. Big Nose is slow, but the fires that he spit move quite quickly. So you want to continuously be attacking with your snow to turn them into snowballs. One of the few ways that you can get killed is if you get stuck on the upper platforms. If you're up on the top platforms and Big Nose is heading towards you, he can hop up there and you should never try to jump over Big Nose. Just don't do it. Always go under or around. Stay away from the upper platforms if Big Nose is in the middle. That way he won't be able to get to you. Whenever he turns blue, he's almost defeated, and when he's on a lower platform than you, it's very easy to push the snowballs down towards him. So just avoid jumping on him and watch out when you're on the upper platforms, and you should be able to clear 40 without much hassle. That brings us to the game's final bonus slot machine. This will be our last opportunity to earn extra lives before the final set of levels. We got an N and an O, which will complete the word snow, and another extra life. Nice! That's a total of two extra lives from this slot machine, and the most you can get out of the slot machine is three. Not bad. The new gimmick for the final set of floors is that there are some open spaces at the bottom, and if you drop through, you'll wrap around to the top. We're certainly going to be using this mechanic to our advantage, and I think it's going to make this set of floors a good bit easier than the previous set. The new enemies here are called Bat Cheese, and as the name implies, they're blue bat-like enemies, but they have some impressive facial hair. They fly around erratically, but they do stop from time to time, and that's your chance to strike. On the next floor, there's a whole bunch of bat cheese, and if you just drop down to the left, you'll reappear at the top, 
and we'll be able to use our early invincibility to take out most of the bat cheese and then we can just finish off whichever ones are left. If you want to find a hidden set of cherries in the upper right corner, make sure to keep one of the enemies alive. You won't be able to find any of the hidden items in this game after you've cleared out the floor. There are numerous hidden items to find on the final floors, like this ice cream cone, but all of the ones that are left are just worth points. There are no more warp zones to locate. Still, finding hidden items is fun. At first glance, you may think the enemies on this floor are your basic tit cheese, but no, those are bow toms, and they are much more dangerous. If you let them go for long enough, they'll do a charging attack at you, so you do need to take them seriously. Floor 46 is a bit easier than the previous one. Run straight off to the right so you can drop down through the middle, and use your early invincibility to take out any bow toms that you can. Then just clean up the remaining enemies. And we'll be on to floor 47. Once again, we're going to drop straight down through the middle, and this time try to freeze two bow toms and push those snowballs together for a double snowball attack. There's a hidden bunch of cherries on the left side, and one bow tom did manage to get away, but he's not much of a threat without his friends. We are so close to the end now. Drop down on the left side and try to catch the upper left bat chi. We're going to push that snowball out of the way. We're not trying to do anything fancy here, just clean up the remaining few enemies so that we can make our way to floor 49, the final floor before the final boss. Run right and drop down through the center, ice some bow toms, and if you jump and attack the air here, you'll find an ice cream cone, but it's a little bit too high to collect. Just drop down on the right and you'll be able to approach it from above. We'll take out the final enemy, and that will take us to floor 50, where we'll meet the final boss, King Scorch. <laughs> yeah, no. It's actually the Rock Bubble Heads. The Rock Bubble Heads take a ton of damage to defeat, so this battle is a marathon, not a sprint. Right away, you'll notice that the statues spit bubbles at you. While there are two statues on the screen, you'll be right in the middle of their crossfire, and it's very difficult to avoid all of the bubbles. If you get caught inside of a bubble, you need to rapidly attack to get out. If you have access to a turbo controller and you don't think that it's cheating to use it, then that is a very good way to escape the bubbles. You can be captured by the empty bubbles, but you can also be captured by bubbles that contain potions, and being captured by these bubbles is the only way to obtain those potions. You won't find a yellow or green potion here, but you can find a very useful blue potion, and the red potion is also available, but this arena is very small, so the red potion is not as important as the blue one. The blue potion supports our primary strategy. You'll notice that some of the bubbles contain a blue or red sphere. Those bubbles won't be able to trap you. Pay attention to the ones with the red spheres in them. When they hit the spikes above, they're going to drop a flame, and you'll need to avoid that fire. The blue spheres will drop an enemy. Whenever an enemy is dropped, try to trap it with your snow attack, and then push the snowball towards one of the bosses. You should also be trying to deal chip damage to the bosses by attacking them with your snow attack whenever you have an opening. It is very difficult to defeat these bosses without losing any lives. Sometimes you'll be stuck inside of a bubble, and when you escape it, you'll land on top of the fires. This is very difficult to avoid. The good news is, as long as you don't use a continue, you can lose a few lives here on these bosses, and you'll still be able to get the game's special ending. 
If you're down to your last life, it is extremely critical that you take out one of the two statues. Once one of the two statues has been removed, it's not that difficult to defeat the other one without losing any lives. Don't forget that neither the fires in front of the statues or the ones that fall from the bubbles will stop you from pushing snowballs at the boss. You can push a snowball right through those flames. When you see the eye of the statue catch on fire, that means it's destroyed. Now we can hang out on the right side and the left statue won't be able to reach us with its bubble attack. We have some lives to spare, so we can be a little bit reckless and run in and try to do some snow attacks. But at this point, we want to focus on just attacking enemies so that we can push snowballs at the boss whenever we have a safe opening. Don't worry about collecting potions at this point, that will just put you in danger. Just look for enemies to turn into snowballs and we'll push those at the boss. And we almost got killed there, so try to be a little bit safer than that. And with that, the final head has fallen, and we've done it. We've beaten Snow Brothers. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. But before we check out the special ending, we should look at the not-so-special ending first. This ending that you'll see if you used one or more continues to beat the game doesn't seem like a bad ending, and if you didn't know the special ending existed, you would probably think this ending was totally normal. So Nick and Tom banish King Scorch to the Crystal Mountains... somehow... And then they return to the Kingdom of Whiteland and everything is cool. Roll the credits. Sounds like a typical NES ending to me. The bad guy is defeated and everything goes back to normal. But what about that special ending? If you are able to beat the game without using any continues, you'll see a slightly different ending. And to see that, let's go back to our previous run. It's not that difficult to get to the end of this game if you use your nine continues, but beating the game without using a single one is quite a good challenge and adds some replay value to the game. This time, the princes get a kiss from the princesses, which breaks the curse and turns them back into humans. I guess if you use continues, you don't deserve to get a kiss from a princess, even if just one small kiss is all it takes to break a curse and turn you back into a human being. Yeah, that is cold. Just like the spin doctor said, one, two, princes kneel before you, that's what I said now, princes, princes who adore you, just go ahead now. This part appears to be the exact same scene that we saw in the earlier story segment, just played in reverse. Nice work, developers. After getting their human bodies back, we see the same scene that we saw at the end of the regular ending. So Nick and Tom banished King Scorch to the Crystal Mountain, and then they returned to Whiteland. But don't roll the credits just yet. In the special ending, there's still one more scene. This time, the princesses marry Nick and Tom, and we get absolute confirmation that everyone lived happily ever after. Roll the credits. And what special ending would be complete without seeing the credits? In total silence. You'd think they could have looped a little bit of music through here, but nope. Total dead silence. As far as arcade ports on the NES goes, this is a pretty good translation. 
Many arcade games are almost completely different on the NES, and while this one is somewhat limited in the number of things that can be on screen at once, it still feels a lot like the original arcade game. Although the original arcade game is a good bit faster and the enemies do thaw out very quickly, so be ready for that if you ever attempt that version. The version on Sega is also very good, and it's quite close to the arcade original, especially for one of the retro ports. So that version is also recommended. Overall, I wouldn't say that this game is better than Bubble Bobble, which has quite a few more power-ups in it and more than twice as many levels, but if you like Bubble Bobble, you should definitely give this game a chance. It's a fun alternative. Before we go, there is a code you can use to access a secret mode. When you see push start appear on the title screen, press up two times, right eight times, down two times, left eight times, then start the game up as normal and you'll get this secret menu and you'll be able to choose from three different options. 2 minutes, 3 minutes, or 5 minutes. These are all different challenges. Each one of these modes presents a small set of levels from the original game, and it ends with a unique level that is special for each mode. You have unlimited lives to complete this challenge? Just be careful not to run out of time. Each time you die, it does take a few seconds before you respawn, so try to stay alive as much as you can. Of the three different modes, the two minute mode is the easiest one. You'll only have to clear six levels, and while you'll only have two minutes to do it in, the final level is one of the easier ones. We only have to finish six floors here, but do not waste time on the first five floors because the last one is tricky and you're going to need to freeze enemies and use them as platforms to be able to complete it. So you want to make sure you have some extra time to do that. We still have over a minute left when we got to floor five here, so we're doing quite well. We're going to freeze this enemy on the right side and then run to the top. And then we'll just ride the snowball down to the left side and finish off the remaining two enemies. Quickly. All right. 49 seconds. Did not do great there, but this is floor number six. And you'll notice that this one is a bit different. You don't need to clear all of the enemies here. You just need to make it to the princess. In fact, if you clear any of the enemies here, they'll immediately respawn. And that's how you need to do it. You need to freeze the enemies into snowballs and use them as platforms to get up to the top. We had 37 seconds remaining, which is okay. If you can do better, let us know how you did in the comments. Next, let's take a look at the three and five minute modes. I'm not going to play through all of the levels. I just want to show the unique final level in each set. But you'll notice right away when you start up the three minute mode that the first level is different than the one we played on the two minute mode. So be prepared for that. These are not the same challenges. For the three minute mode, we need to complete nine floors this time. And for the five minute mode, we're going to need to do 15 floors. So you'll do three floors per minute. And here is floor number nine, which is actually very easy. You just need to jump straight up the middle and hopefully that batchy will cooperate. And that's all it takes. The three minute mode, not very difficult, but the five minute mode, this is the most challenging of the timed modes. So we're going to take a look at that one next, but first we'll get our bonus score. 51 seconds remaining, not bad. What's your best score for the three minute mode? 
You will need to re-enter the code each time you want to access the menu and change which mode you want to play. So we'll do that and select 5 minutes. And you'll notice whenever we start up the 5 minute mode that this one is different from the 2 and 3 minute modes. So you'll experience many different levels when you try these timed modes. I'm not sure why they had to be hidden behind a secret code. It's not like that in the Famicom version. And this is floor number 15. This one is tricky, so hopefully you have some extra time. If you're fast, you should be able to quickly climb up to this platform, but from here, we're either going to need some help from a bat chi to get up to the top, or if you can somehow generate a snowball here and push it down below, the enemies will die and immediately respawn, and you may be able to use them as platforms to get higher up. Once you get up here, you want to jump over to the right, and we're going to need cooperation from the bat chi again to climb up one more tier. Come on, bat chi. If you don't like waiting for the bat chi, you can try clearing the enemies again, but once you get up here, you simply need to jump, and you'll be able to reach the princess. That one can be tough. And with that, we've completed all three timed modes in Snow Brothers. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally beat Snow Brothers and return Nick and Tom back into their human forms. If it did, make sure to give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos. Because there will always be more fire wizards making questionable choices with ice magic. And that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Happy Holidays.